So now last week, um, Sarah mentioned that Georgia O'Keeffe was one of her most, uh, most influential women in her life. And uh, we had actually done an art talk previously with uh, about Georgia O'Keeffe, but we've asked Sarah to come back and do Art Talk 89 on Georgia O'Keeffe and focusing on her flowers. So over to you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. Yes, yeah, so we'll be revisiting Georgia O'Keeffe and we're gonna focus on some of her flowers and maybe go a little more in depth than we did back in 2020. So uh, she was, uh, as you remember, as AJ mentioned, a woman that I highlighted in my presentation last week of women who inspire me. So Georgia O'Keeffe was born in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin to a family of dairy farmers. And a fun fact is that her maternal grandfather, George Toto, who she was named after, uh, was a Hungarian count. Uh, Georgia decided by the age of 10 that she wanted to be an artist. And her mother sent her to watercolor classes along with her sisters. She then went on to study at the Art Institute of Chicago and the Art Students League in New York. And while living in New York, she frequented Gallery 291, which was owned by Alfred Stieglitz. And this gallery was one of the only places in the U.S. at the time where European avant-garde art was exhibited. And so that's where O'Keeffe was influenced by painters like Matisse and Rodin. And recognizing her potential, Stieglitz began a correspondence with O'Keeffe. And unbeknownst to O'Keeffe, he exhibited 10 of her charcoals at his Gallery 291. During the 1920s, Stieglitz introduced O'Keeffe to his friends and fellow artists, the Stieglitz Circle, as they were called, uh, and they all championed modern art. So this piece is from earlier in her career, around 1903 to 1905, and it's a watercolor study of flowers in a teapot being used as a makeshift vase. Um, and she was still very young when she painted this, so it's safe to assume that she was still in art school. So at this point, um, this is more about technique and use of watercolor, and then we'll kind of see her signature style slowly develop as we look at pieces a little later in her career. So we're jumping about 10 years ahead, and we can see how much her style differs already. Um, these are three different studies of the flower red canna done in watercolor and oil. And even going from the piece in 1915 versus the one in 1924, about another 10 years, we can see the representation of the flower get even more abstract and specific. Paul Strand was a photographer in the Stieglitz circle that I mentioned before, and O'Keefe was particularly interested in his photos and the way that his camera acted like a magnifying glass for his subject matter. And we could see here specifically for the 1924 piece, she depicts the red canna extremely up close. Moving on, uh, we've got a couple versions of her calla lilies. Again, one is the full flower and one more zoomed in to show more detail. And it's interesting because in real life, we would kind of usually only see these flowers similar to the piece on the left. We're so much bigger than a flower, so we view them as whole flowers. But the uniqueness of O'Keeffe's work is that she gave us a new perspective. And specifically with these pieces, uh, they're much larger than the red canna ones, so that up-close, detailed perspective is emphasized even more. Uh, this painting is quite simple. It features a close-up image of a blue flower, a blue morning glory, and Georgia carefully and beautifully utilized colors to make the painting quite sharp and vivid. The painting's background is very light, whereas the top flower features a dark shadow. Additionally, the, the painting's bottom is made entirely in light with none of that dark shadow. Um, and some critics suggest that O'Keeffe did this to indicate that the flower is dying. Uh, but this painting is a great example of color theory. This is because its main colors are this cool blue and purple, but then there's also hints of yellow, the warm colors, which creates this contrast within the piece. And she used the size of the flower to catch the viewer's attention and then the way she used the color was aimed at making the image a little more enchanting. So here, of course, are two studies of her sunflowers. The main difference being the background color. I think it's safe to say that the sunflower on the left is outside with the blue sky in the background, and um, a sunflower from Maggie is painted inside with this orange background. And an interesting fact is that Maggie, um, in the title, A Sunflower for Maggie, was the wife of Robert Wood Johnson of the Johnson & Johnson family. This piece is really striking. It's got this dark maroonish black and cool blue that take up most of the canvas. 
And O'Keefe painted this while at a friend's house in Taos, New Mexico. And if you recall back in 2020, when I first highlighted O'Keefe, she spent a lot of time and was very inspired by New Mexico and, and the desert there. And she said, quote, when I was at Mabel's in Taos, there was an alfalfa field, like a large green saucer. One day walking down the path, I picked up a large blackish red hollyhock and some bright dark blue larkspur that immediately went into a painting and then another painting. Uh, so these blooms obviously inspired multiple versions of this painting. And she ties the flowers together by adding the little details of sea foam and fuchsia in both of the flowers. Uh, and here's a scarf inspired by the painting that we just saw with many colors of black, blue, and that fuchsia again. Uh, and there's different flower patterns on scarves that are sold through her website. And finally, we can see her red poppy painting from 1927 was turned into U.S. stamps in 1995. And there's the quote, nobody sees a flower really. It's so small. We haven't time. And to see takes time. Like to have a friend takes time. She was really enamored with the natural beauty and the diversity of different flowers, and her perspective of them is really what made her such a unique and formidable modern artist. Thank you. Well, wow, thank you, Sarah. Thanks for coming back to Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, that, uh, that scarf of the, I think, the Moroccan black, uh, black purple flower was just captivating. I think you're going to have to get that for your wife, AJ. I better check how expensive that's going to be online. I, huh? I, I'm guessing it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not nothing. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. That was wonderful.